Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is DFS of graph and it is an easy level problem. So yesterday it was BFS and today it is DFS. Both are very standard graph traversing algorithms and uh, we are just going to have a quick summary of what a DFS is. So I'm telling you this particular thing beforehand that if you haven't studied DFS at all and uh, you are studying it for the first time, I highly recommend you to check out some other videos on YouTube in which they have properly explained all the things behind DFS. In this video, we're just going to discuss a quick summary of what a DFS is and how we can perform it programmatically. So we see that the expected time complexity is O of V plus E and expected space complexity is O of V, which is standard for any graph traversing algorithm. Right. Now let us have a look at what a DFS is. So today we are going to talk about DFS and let's say we have some graph nodes like these. Right. So let me just number them quickly. So let's say this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. Right. So let's say I am starting from the first node. I am going to mark this particular node as visited. Right. Now since this particular node is visited, now I need to explore its neighbors. So the neighbors of 1 in this particular case are, let's say for some reason we started with 4 and then we have 3 and then we have 2. Right. So what happens in a BFS? I'm talking about a BFS first. So yesterday we took all of its neighbors and wrote them down at once like this. We write one and then all of its neighbors one, four, three and two. But this is not the case with the DFS, right? What we do, let's say we are starting with four. So we will first come to four, right? Once we come to four, then we will start exploring its neighbors. So you see, yesterday we were writing all the neighbors of 1 together with 1. Now we are just going to focus on 4 first. So let's say we come at 4. First of all, let me just mark it as visited. So I am going to take this particular node and this is visited now. So now I go to this particular node 5 and I will write 5 here. So this is 5. Now since I am at 5, I am going to explore its neighbors which is 8 next. I also mark this 5, I also mark this 5 and 8 as visited node. Now I am going to traverse through its neighbors. So the neighbors of 8 are 11 and 12. So you see since I have traversed all the neighbors, let me just also mark these nodes. So these are 11 and 12. Right. Since I have marked all of these nodes, that means I have covered the whole depth of this particular branch, right? So you see, I started with one. Then I saw that one of the neighbors of one is four. So now next, so next I started exploring the neighbors of four. I saw that one of the neighbors of four is five. I started exploring the neighbors of five. Then I go to eight and then 11 and 12 respectively. Now the cool thing about this is that you're always, you're always going to go in one particular direction first. Right. So if I just try to show it to you diagrammatically, this is how a BFS, this is how a BFS expands. So let's say you are at the center, then you expand it like this and you expand your radius like this and then you keep on expanding it. Right. This is how a BFS looks like. Now if I talk about a DFS, you will see if you are at this particular center, you will start exploring in some direction here and then let's say you go in some direction from here, then you go from here and then you go from here like this. So this will look something like a tree branch, right? Now, in this particular case, you have explored this particular whole branch. Now you go to the next neighbor. Let's say this is three. Let's say this is three. So now the next neighbor of one, three is included here. And since three does not have any further neighbors, so we'll go back to one and then try exploring the next neighbor of one. So it is two in this particular case. Now we can choose either one of them, either 6 or 7 for the next neighbor. So let's say I go to 6, then I'll have to go to 9 and then I come back from 9. I see that there are no other neighbors of 6. So I again come back to 2. I see that uh, there is one more neighbor left that is 7. So I write 7 and then 10. 
So when I come back from 10, I see 7 doesn't have any other neighbors. I go back, I see 2 doesn't have any other neighbors. I again go back. I see 1 doesn't have any other neighbors. So I again go back. Right. So after I come back from 1, I will be able to return to my original function. Right. If I am doing it recursively, I will be able to return to the original function and the whole DFS will be completed. So the key idea is to hop onto any particular node and choose any one of its neighbors. Now, if you choose, let's say, if you choose neighbor X, then you will hop on to neighbor X first and then choose any one of its neighbors. Each time you're going to choose any one of the neighbors and if there are no neighbors of any particular node Y, then you're just going to go back to its parent node, right? And then start exploring other neighbors of the parent node, right? So this is what we generally do. So the program for DFS is also very, very simple, right? What we have to do is, let's say you have a DFS function, right? Here you are going to receive a node, your current node. So the first thing that you would want to do when you come at this node is mark this node as visited. So visited dot node will be equal to one. Now you are just going to go, let's say this is the children of my graph of node, right? You are just going to traverse to the children, and as soon as you encounter a node that is not visited earlier, so if not visited, child, right? In this case, you're just going to call a DFS to your child, right? And if you want to save this traversal somewhere, then you can just uh, make a simple operation here, answer or pushback node. So this will save your current node at the back of your answer. So this is how a simple DFS function looks like, right? So I would say like both DFS and BFS are actually very powerful tools. The key idea is very simple, but uh, on code forces, these concepts, simple concepts can be also used for problems up to 2000 or 2100 or 2200. I've seen problems which requires DFS and some mathematical knowledge or some other bitwise operations knowledge or some DP knowledge. But the key idea of DFS is still the same in all the problems, right? So I'm telling this part again, how do you write it programmatically? First of all, you mark your node as visited. Now you push back your current node into your answer vector. And for all the children, if you see that the child is not visited, you again call a DFS function there, right? So it is as simple as it looks. Now let me just also show you my particular code, which I submitted. So this is my code. What I've done is I created an answer vector and I also created a Boolean vector of a size V, which is initialized to false, right? So I start my DFS with node zero. I mark it as visited and I push back the node into my answer. So I traverse the children of the current node and I check if it has not visited, I just call the DFS function on the child again, right? So let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular code works and this is absolutely correct. So you see it passes all the test cases and the solution is absolutely correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and you'll be able to reach more number of people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So I see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet. In case you're one of them, then definitely consider subscribing. It's always free of cost and you can always unsubscribe if you don't find the videos interesting later. So share this channel with your friends. Until the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye-bye.